What up, everybody? Instructor Beat. Back again, this time with a teacher resource for teaching multiplication strategies. So the point of this video is to look at our three favorite uh, multiplication strategies or algorithms, whatever you want to call them, and discuss which ones our th top three are that we think teachers should be teaching and why. And then, of course, an example of each one. Um, even if you know how to do them, it's, you know, it could always be good to look at an example. So, uh, the first thing we are going to look at, right, is our three best methods to teach your students. Um, and so we have organized these in a bronze, silver, and gold. And then we have one over here we won't click yet because it is a pile of poop. Um, and we don't think any teacher should be teaching that. So in third place, drum roll please, the open array, um, sometimes called the box method, not the lattice bo box method, um, but the open array, and we will look at that. Even if you don't recognize the name, you'll be like, oh yeah, I, I know that one. In second place, our second favorite uh, method to teach your students how to multiply, drum roll please, partial products, the partial products method of multiplication, a favorite of everyday mathematics. And then in first place, our number one best method, should be no surprise, the standard algorithm. Yes, the age old, I learned it uh, 20 years ago and they're still teaching it. And even though some teachers and parents think Common Core doesn't expect it to be taught, it is in the standards and it's still a best practice to teach your students how to multiply that way. Um, and if you notice, in last place, or as we like to say, a pile of poop. Now, please don't get your feelings hurt if you teach your students this. Um, if you do, I would recommend teaching something entirely different. Um, but, you know, don't turn the video off just because you might teach this method. And that is the lattice box. If you are teaching the lattice box, that is a pile of poo emoji right there. Um, and we would highly recommend picking one of these other three strategies to teach. And we'll talk about why some teachers use that lattice box method. Um, but first, let's look at why we chose each of these, starting with number three, the open array. Um, so the why, right? Because we always want to talk about why we're doing things, okay? We like, the first reason we like the strategy is, obviously you can read, but I'll read it for you. It develops understanding of the value of numbers based on the location of the digit right? And it's not really a visual model per se, you know, like dividing fractions using area models, uh, but we'll call it a pseudo visual model for students who need that and who might need to see it kind of broken apart um, in a box instead of using partial products. Number two, right? Uh, it's easier to teach, especially to younger students, um, because it doesn't involve the step of regrouping while multiplying, such as the standard algorithm. And number three, it's the same process for multiplying by one digit number as if you're doing a multi-digit number. You just have to break apart the number, or sorry, break apart and add another box. Um, and so those are the reasons that we love this strategy. Let's look at the steps for this, okay, and then of course we'll do an example, uh-oh. Number one, right, you draw the box you need and you split it for the amount of place values you need. And if this doesn't make any sense, hopefully it will when we do our example next slide. You write the two factors you're multiplying in expanded form, which goes with showing the value of each digit. You multiply the place values and fill in the products in the boxes, and then you add all the boxes together for your product, right? So those are the steps that we teach our kids. You might want to make it a little bit more kid friendly sounding but basically those are your kind of your steps and if we look at an example right here let's look at this let me grab a pen and we'll try to solve this so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to draw a box oops i'm going to draw it down here okay and it doesn't have to be a you know really cute box but there you go and i know that up here right i have i'm going to put 345 at top okay so now I'm going to break it apart using my expanded form. I have 300. I just got this new writing pad. It's really cool, but, you know, still working on that. Plus 40, plus 5. 
and I'm multiplying by 23, which will be 20 plus 3. I like to put a little time sign here. And I have 20 plus 3. Okay, so now all I'm doing is I'm multiplying my digits times each other. So that would be uh, 6, and then a 6,000 right there. This is 20 times 40, kind of like the old school multiplication, multiplication tables. So 4 times 2 is 8. I add my two zeros to make it 800. 5 times 2 is 10. I add my 0 to make 100. And now I'm doing 3 times 300, so that would be 9. I add my two zeros from the 300. 3 times 4 is 12. I add my zero. And now the multiplying and adding your zeros, right, that should be taught obviously before this, it's a basic skill. I mean, it isn't a lot of third grade standards anyway, understanding place value and multiplying and um, maybe not moving your decimal yet if you're in third grade, but especially as you get to fifth grade, understand, you know, the, the multiplying by 10, dividing by 10, moving your decimal and the powers of 10 and how our place value system is based on that. And then three times five is 15. And then over here, right, all I gotta do is add them all up. And again, if you notice, I didn't have to deal with any regrouping as I was multiplying, which can be one of the trickier things um, for people who are doing the standard algorithm. Okay, And you don't have to add them all like this. You could actually have them add down and then add those numbers together. Um, hopefully I can get this right. If not, I will probably just edit that part out of the video. That would be 3. That's 9, 18, 19. Carry your 1. Right, and that's a seven. So y is going to equal seven thousand. Oop, sorry, seven thousand nine hundred thirty-five. Okay. So that's an example of a three-digit times two-digit number. And again, it's the same thing. If it was just two, then you would just have a two right here, and you would just multiply all those and add them up. So which is one of the reasons we really like it, right? And so you, so you didn't have to regroup. It's showing the value of each place value and you are working on um, some easy kind of it's kind of a visual model if you will right so our next one is partial products and this is one that a lot of people might not actually be familiar with but our why behind it we like it because for the same reason it develops understanding of the value of numbers based on the location of the digit so understanding that you know a three in the tens place is really 30. again it doesn't involve re the step of regrouping while multiplying which can be one of the trickier things. It's also the same process for multiplying by a one-digit factor as a multi-digit factor. And then the reason we bump this up to number two over the open array or the box method is because this is a great scaffold for eventually getting to the standard algorithm. I think as teachers, right, our goal should be to get to the standard algorithm, um, especially because many standards have it explicitly stated when they get into middle school. And as elementary school teachers, we should be teaching for the future of our mathematicians, right? So not taking the easy way out um, by teaching the lattice box just because it's easy and the kids like to draw it and woohoo, everybody's happy, right? But really taking the time if they're struggling to practice it and practice it and practice it because some things take practice, right? Um, and then trying to get them ready for middle school, right? So our goal should be get to, the standard out, to get to the standard algorithm eventually, and so this is a great way to do it. So your steps for this, okay, you're gonna line the numbers up starting with the ones place, which is why it's uh, similar to the standard algorithm. You multiply each digit in the bottom factor, right? So the bottom number by all the digits in the top factor, just like you would um, for the standard algorithm. And then you're going to add all the partial products together to get your product, okay? And so um, if these don't make sense, I mean, it, they might not be the best descriptive steps, but hopefully as we do an example, we'll kind of see what we're talking about. So we're going to do the same exact problem, right? And so the first thing we do is I'm going to line it up. I have 345 times 23. So it kind of begins to look like the standard algorithm. And now, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply my one digit by all the digits up top, but we're going to be making partial products and then adding them together. So I have three times five, and then I'm going to do three times 40, right? And then I'm going to do three times 300, 
And that's my first step because I'm multiplying all those, right? And so we're understanding the place value of the digits. And now we're going to do the tens place times everything. So again, right, that's a really a 20. So we're going to do 20 times 5. And then we're going to do 20 times 40. And then we're going to do 20 times 300. And obviously this is very, very similar to the open array. But again, like we said, the reason we bumped this above it and are to be the silver middle winner um, is because you're really getting used to seeing the standard algorithm, right? And lining it up and kind of showing what you're doing. But this is a great way to introduce it to conceptually kind of understand what you're doing when you're actually multiplying. Because we understand when you're doing the standard algorithm, um, you, a lot of people just memorize the steps, right? Um, which is okay eventually, but we do want to try to teach conceptually what's happening. So this is a great way to do that and still have it kind of look similar. So again, just like we did before, we did this three times. Five is 15. Um, that's 120. This is 900. This is 5 times uh, 2 is 10, add your 0 for 100. Uh, 2 times 4 is 8, add your 2 zeros for 800. And then we have three or 2 times 3 is 6. And then we're going to add our 3 zeros, make it 6,000. Now, if your students are neat, they can stop right here and add these up, which again looks like the standard algorithm. But because I'm using this writing pad and it's not neat, I do want to um, kind of rewrite these. So I'm just going to rewrite them over here, starting with the bottom. And it, again, it doesn't really matter how you do it, as long as you're adding up all your partial products, hence the name. And we're going to add them up, and hopefully get the same answer as before. That'd be 3, that's uh, 9, right? 18, 19, carrier 1, should be 7,935 which is the same answer as I got for the first um, using open array. So again, this is just an example. You can uh, look up other examples. We do have a student video for how to do the partial product example. If you're doing playlists, we'd love for you to add that to it. But this is a great way to introduce multiplication. Um, if I was teaching fourth grade, which is when a lot of states uh, who are doing Common Core or other states and start introducing two-digit by two-digit multiplication, this is how I would do it. Okay, um, because you're really introducing the standard algorithm, but then I would get to the standard algorithm and have my students only doing that, which leads us to number one, the standard algorithm. Why do we like it? It prepares them for math later down the road, right? So for example, decimals. Now you can do decimals using the partial products. I know some people do decimals using the lattice box, right? Because they can just slide it. Um, that's a terrible idea though to not at least conceptually have your students understand what's happening um, so this prepares them though for when they get into middle school or when they're in fifth grade and they're multiplying decimals or you know what whenever that case whatever that case may be um, this is where we want them to get right most state standards call for it at some point maybe not your grade which brings us up a great point right just because something isn't expected in your grade doesn't mean you shouldn't set your students up for success by teaching them that. Um, just because, you know, like, I, you know, I know some teachers who teach the open array method for two digit by two digit because they don't want to take the time because kids struggle with regrouping and it's a hassle and yada, yada, yada. Well, that's kind of lazy, right? Um, it's okay to conceptually introduce it using those things but if you're teaching fourth grade and you know in fifth grade they it needs to be taught a certain way based on the state standard go ahead and teach it that way you know have your kids practice that and you know what you may have to practice and it may take a long time but i've never had a student who eventually did not get this and it might have been homework problems i might have had to meet them during lunch whatever the case may be but they can get it you need to have high expectations for your students and you also need to be making sure that you're looking at what's coming up in the next couple grades to prepare your students for that, right? And then obviously once it's learned, it's the easiest and fastest way to multiply. So it may be the hardest way to uh, learn how to multiply because you have to learn about regrouping and, you know, adding your zero, and, you know, whatever the case may be. But once it's learned, it is the fastest way. And eventually, right, if at the end of the day, 
you know, let's say we're taking a state test. If kids are spending 20 minutes on a multiplication problem because they're trying to draw their box, that's energy and effort taken out from other problems, right? And so we want to make sure we're teaching them not only for future grades, but also, you know, we want it to be the easiest and fastest way possible too. So obviously this does not teach conceptually what's happening, which is why I say we, you know, introduce it with the open array or the partial products. Um, but here are my steps I teach. Line up the digits and go from right to left. Uh, when you have multiplied all the ones place, on the bottom right by all the digits on top then you cross out add your zero and erase and this isn't just something we say we do talk about why we do that okay um, so it's just not a step and then do the next digit moving from right to left add the two products up at the end and you have your answer right and so obviously most of you probably learned this in school so you don't need to see it but I'll just show it as I talk through the steps that we just talked about so we start with our ones place and we go from right to left so 3 times 5 is 15, carry your 1, circle it, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13, carry 1 and circle it, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10, and now I cross out, I add my 0, and I erase. So I just erased everything I carried because now I'm basically starting a new multiplication product. And we do talk about you add your zero because this is a 20. And if they've done partial products, then they would understand that kind of naturally. So now 2 times 5 is 10. I carry my 1 and circle it. 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9. 2 times 3 is 6. I add these together and I should have the exact same answer as my other ones, which I do. And your product is 7,935. Okay. This is just a video kind of talk about why we think these methods should be taught and the purpose behind them and some steps for teachers may, maybe who don't understand how they could introduce it to their students. Um, as always, please check us out on Instructabeats, uh, YouTube channel Instructabeats, and then Instagram at Instructabeats. Please follow. Um, please subscribe to our YouTube. And as always, you can email us at Instructabeats at gmail.com. Instructabeats out!